Twelve days ago, Speaker McCarthy told Breitbart, if we move forward with an impeachment inquiry, it would occur through a vote on the floor of the People's House and not through a declaration by one person. Why do you think he flip-flopped? Because probably he didn't have the votes. Uh, that's one reason you don't bring a bill to the floor. Uh, when we had the impeachment of President Trump, uh, it followed the phone call and all the rest of that that uh, the whistleblower revealed, and then I had a conversation with him. And so we moved forward, collecting information to be prepared to bring a bill to the floor. He's saying, well, Nancy didn't bring a bill to the floor. No, we did. We yeah, did. you we did, did five weeks later, you, you brought yeah. the bill up, up for a vote. He's actually, he does, he cites you. He's doing what he once criticized you for doing. He criticized you for not initially having a vote. Now he says, Nancy Pelosi has changed the rules of the House. We're just following through. No, it was well, completely not true. We had a few weeks where we had to make our case, and, and at, I had signed six chair, committee chairs to get the information and the rest, and that then prepared us to bring the bill to the floor. They've had, what, nine months of collecting information. They have nothing. and, and uh, Because the, the, the Trump Department of Justice had ruling that yeah. because you hadn't brought it to a vote, that the White House didn't need to cooperate, or the White House said that they didn't need to cooperate. That's okay. now something that this White House could choose to do. That's right. Do you, Actually, would you recommend this White House not cooperate? Well, it's not a question of not cooperate. It's a question of a bit follow the law. Uh, we, we were planning to bring it to the floor, but we wanted to be ready. And, we, and uh, the and member impact, member impact, that's how my heart beats, member <laughs> impact, mm -hmm. member impact. And, and so we were ready. The, um, in the meantime, the Trump administration and the Justice Department said, unless there's a bill on the floor, the administration does not have to answer to subpoenas. Right. And that is the law. That became the law. And it is the law now. So the administration can respond or not, but they don't have to. Do you see some irony in this that the first impeachment of the former president was because of that phone call he had with President Zelensky pressuring him to launch an investigation into President Biden right. uh, in order to in order to to smear him. Um, Zelensky resisted that. Kevin McCarthy is doing what Zelensky refused to do. He has given in and is pursuing yes. an investigation. It's most unfortunate because impeachment is something that our founders put in the Constitution. They foresaw that there could be a rogue executive, a president. That is there for a reason. And you have to have your case. Why are you doing this? And, and is, does it qualify, uh, meet the standards for impeachment? With President Trump, it was very clear that he had engaged in ac actions and activity in that phone call that really were a... Despite months of investigation, the Republicans have yet to find any evidence That's right. in implicating then Vice President Biden in his, uh, That's right. in his son's affairs. Is, um, I mean, McCarthy is saying this is just an inquiry. Is it inevitable that it will be an impeachment? Well, I, I think that really is more of a, a um, matter of the politics of the Republican caucus. You have to impeach the president or else we're going to vacate the chair of speaker. You can't you have to shut down government or else we're going to vacate the chair. This is not responsible governance, but it's the chaos on the Republican side. It, it, the, the threats that, that Speaker McCarthy is, that you're just referencing, experiencing from his right flank, is it that what's driving him or is it the, the former president? I mean, CNN has reported he and Elise Stefanik have spoken about impeachment. Marjorie Taylor Greene yeah. says that she had uh, told the New York Times she had uh, dinner with him at Bedminster, spoke about the impeachment with him. Is he the one sort of pulling the strings on this? Well, he is, and he is shining a light on the strings, as I'm fond of saying. Uh, he's he's shining the light on the strings? <laughs> yes. No, thank you very much, Mr. President. But um, they're connected. Y yes, uh, uh, the former president is exerting his influence, and the others are following up on it. So they're not two separate things. Is it the members of his committee, or is it the president? It's the president and the members mm -hmm. of the Republican caucus. Is it an impossible situation that Speaker McCarthy has put himself in, in order to get power? Yeah, I think all it's the, the ever the incredibly shrinking speakership. That's what it's become. 
Yeah. I mean, it became that the first night when he had to make all these pledges, pr uh, promises to become speaker. Really, it isn't worth it to be speaker to abdicate that much ju uh, jurisdiction over the House. I want to talk about your decision to yeah. seek re-election. What was the motivating factor? What was the final decision? Well, the motivating factor, uh, and then there were some uh, other considerations, but for, tw uh, for 20 years, my district has given me the latitude to be the speaker or the leader. That means for 20 years I had to be responsible for everything on the floor of the House. It was about being, uh, raising money to win the elections. It was, I went to 87 countries. I'm the first leader in, the, I don't know how long, that ever even had a security credential who rose to the heights of speaker or leader in the Congress. So I had a global and national set of responsibilities, and of course, my domestic ones. I say to the members, whatever honors you may have given me to be speaker, leader, whip, whatever, there's no honor greater to me than to walk on that floor and think that I am sent there by the people of San Francisco to speak for them. So that was my central point. In addition to that, I have some political responsibilities. I am determined that we will win the House President Biden will win the White House and that we will increase if our numbers in the If the former president Senate. wasn't seeking re-election, do you think you would have been as determined to seek re-election? Well, I don't even know who they're going to nominate. Do you think they'll nominate a twice impeached, once defeated and multi-indicted person to be president of the United States? Do you believe he will actually, any of these cases will actually be adjudicated before? I have no idea. I know nothing. I keep my distance from the courts and what, what they're doing there. Um, I don't even ask the question. There's obviously, look, even among very loyal Democrats, there's a lot of concerns about, about the president. Is he the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump, the best candidate to defeat any of the Republicans who are, are running right now? I think so. Uh, pre uh, yes. Uh, president, uh, president Biden has, um, he has great experience and wisdom. He's been at this for a long time, as you know, as a senator, vice president, and now president. He has a vision for our country that's about fairness and justice and addressing the kitchen table issues of America's working families. He has that vision. He knows why he wants to be president and is president. He has knowledge of the issues and therefore judgment to be respected and wisdom that he brings so, to the table. So why is there such concern among, among a lot of Democrats about him? Well, I, I travel a bit in those circles of Democrats uh, nationally and politically, and while there may be some concerns, everybody's for him. Overwhelmingly, everybody's for him. Do you think there's any chance he does not continue running? I hope not. I hope not. I mean, this president... David has, Ignatius recently came out saying he, he thinks the former president should not run. Yeah, so uh, that's one. <laughs> and he also said he shouldn't run because he allowed me to go to Taiwan. Nobody allows me to do anything. I was Speaker of the House, and the invitation came from the Taiwan government for me to go there. It wasn't up to David Ignatius. Is, is Vice President that Kamala Harris the best running mate for this president? He thinks so, and that's what matters. And by the way, think so? she's very politically astute. I don't think people give her enough credit. Uh, she, of course, values-based, consistent with the president's values and the rest. And uh, people don't understand, she's politically astute. Why would she be vice president if she were not? But when she was running for uh, attorney general in California, she had 6% in the polls. 6% in the polls. And she politically astutely made her case about why she would be good, did her politics, and became attorney general. So don't not, people shouldn't underestimate what... Kamala Harris brings to the table. But do you think she is the, the best running mate, though? She's the vice president of the United States. So when people say to me, well, why isn't she doing this or that? I said, because she's the vice president. That's the job description. You don't do that much. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know you, you, you're a, a source of strength, inspiration, intellectual resource, and the rest. And, you, and she, I think she's represented our country very well at home and abroad.